I grow a lot of pineapple, and the reason why I like the pineapple is because it's antifungal, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, yeah. it's citrus, so it's like, it's, it's antifungal. But then what I was just saying was, you know... And, and do you live in a sort of a moist, growing region? I live on the coast, okay. a Mendo coast. So even even my inland That's property isn't like really yeah. inland. It makes a ton you know, of smart. Things. Exactly. So, so you know, and, and, and that breeding came from, like, decades of farmers coming in and saying, like, hey, dude, grow cheese and pineapple. That's what you're going to... And now I'm growing a lot of Royal Kush, the Royal Kush is actually doing phenomenal. Oh wow! In those in those in those areas, gotta watch out for PM. Oh, but, dude, that's but, so but, funny but, you said that. But but it is but it is definitely like that's 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 our front runner right now in development. Dude, it's funny you said uh, you said Royal Kush and pineapple, right? So, so there's this um, so there's this terpene that's a very obscure terpene that you never really see show up as a primary terpene. It's called awesomine. And it's just an awesome terpene. It just sounds like, you know, it's O-C-I-M-E-N-E. We have awesome Yeah. And so awesomeine you see in like, um, so awesomeine you see either track with myrcene or you see track with terpinaline. So a, a lot of the um, Hawaiian sativa strains, there'll be terpinaline and awesomeine. But then like you have this whole group of the myrcene strains, like where it's myrcene awesomeine. And that's things like papaya and mango, green crack, dream queen, stuff like that. Um, but then also, you know, you have um, you know, in, in a similar group, you have uh, like in the pines, certain pineapple uh, yeah. cushes, you know, and, and, and so in this, in this varietal called um, Royal Pines, it's a cross of in the pines yeah, and Royal that. Kush. Mm -hmm. And we just tested it from a few different places in Mendo to be awesome and dominant with very little myrcene. And yeah. so it's like, it's a, so that, I mean, that's, that's such an exciting uh, area of the well, direction for us where we can help with, empower yeah. breeders and, and right. farmers because it's like if you can identify all the archetype smells on the roadmap and then start working with them to see which ones work better in your act in your climates and your appellations and all this stuff you know and then from that knowledge you can start creating and crossing obscurities where you don't see certain terpenes ever show up in, with each other you know and, and that's where I feel like the real magic is it's so much of us bringing back what this plant has to offer you know, it's through the empowered farmers and breeders who are, you know, geeked out on this terp subject. And who are then, you know, yeah, like identifying, oh shit, awesomeine, pheno, dominant. That's, you know, a 0.05% outlier in the 10,000 sample data set. You know, it's like, that's unique, you know. So yeah, but it's take regionally, that, breed it, bring that's it. what we're talking about when we're talking about regionally specific breeding too. Right. It's like, so, that, so that, that Royal Pines is something we're working on as well. We got oh, wow. Mean Gene and, and, and Ben Anderson from from um, Emerald Family. Awesome. They're they're doing they're like our Emerald Mountain Farms and that's Mandel Brothers. We brother. saw it, yeah, through the so, yeah, so, that's, so, so, so it's Mandel Brother and then we've got Gene and then we've got so we've got the In the Pines, we've got Mean Gene's Pineapple, and we've got this the RK forty seven and we're wow. so which is which was Mandel's like Star Child. Wow. And we have both of those going in because they're A one number one performers. On our specific land, yeah. they were bred. I mean, the Jean's uh, pineapple was bred on the north face of the Cotto Mountain nice. in Laytonville, right? So that's like you know, so you're getting it's dark by five, and you know, and he's low. He's got Eel River Mountain you wow. know, like influence, so it's like it's cold and wow. and, 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 and sort of dark. Sour, right? not good. So there. Know, sour, <laughs> not good. You know, and then <coughs> and then you have. You know, so Gene is a perfect grower, you know, breeder to work with us. Um, yeah, he's Mandel a great grew, grew most of his stuff, you know, in you know redwood, you know, duff soil, in Compchi, you know, wow. so like and in Albion. So we've got like Compchi Albion. So we're like Compchi Albion. Those are too. Wow. So it's like so we're having this, you know, this like, you know, cold or or uh, you know low lumen dominant, you know, ro you know. Uh, pineapple which becomes susceptible any other strain would be susceptible to powdery mildew blood rot, or to blood rot for, yeah. yeah botrytis and it's like surprising the, the pineapple yeah, isn't because yeah. it stacks too yeah, yeah that's it does it's like, i have i have i just harvested a greenhouse before i came here and the out of what and i did yeah i did it the night i was leaving for here i harvested an entire greenhouse and, and then I left my wife, my wife, I was like, she's like, who's going to be watching this? And the pigs and the horses and all this shit. I was like, 
Yeah, you know, girl, you got it. You got this. You're pregnant. So you got this. I love you. Dude, you're queen. So she, you're she is. She's my empress, man. Too. And she was throwing. She was throwing. She, she was. She, she fucked up and taught me she could do daps. So, oh, I, so I was like, uh, it's 715, sweetie. She's like, okay, I'm on my way. You know, I'm on, and she goes like, oh, but anyway, baby. so we were, so, so we, you know, we pulled it in. This is the first greenhouse I have ever pulled in my entire life that had zero mold. Wow. Not one, dude, do you know how many oscillating fans I had in that greenhouse? Huh. Really? Oh, that's insane. Whoa. Zero well, dude, yeah, and, and that's what's and that's so exciting. That's all pineapple. That's the thing is, it's like that, 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 that's that in the vines, and it's like, and we, you well, know, you're not, and you're not, you're not, fucking wrestling with nature. You're like, you know, being humbled by nature and helping, mm -hmm. and 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 being able to connect into it to find, because yep. I mean, it's impossible. I mean, it, so many people like almost like piss in the wind, you know, yep. trying to like put, you know, all these random things because they want to like think that that's what's going to be good there, and then like go through so much suffering and battling and like you know just, well their I mean, market says their market says oh hey um, their market's like oh hey uh, I love sour diesel I love OG I love sour diesel I love OG I love sour diesel I love OG I love sour diesel and it's like man sour diesel does not grow everywhere so it's like so like so like you know Kyle decides like I'm gonna throw in a bunch of sour D two miles from the coast he's gonna you know he's not gonna have an expression for shit yeah. You know, and then the, the other thing is too is it's like, you know, we're one rainstorm away from screwing everything up, oh, and yeah. it's not the bud rot that gets us all. It's the it's the it's the tur it's a trichome wash. Right. It's a trichome right. wash. So it's like, we're, I mean, like we're like macheting plants before a rainstorm, <laughs> trying to like you know, we're just like get Emergency these things August. in, running like new. No. You know, but but it's like, Dude, but all delicate. Like we're rushing yeah. to be very delicate, you know, and and you know, and getting every because after yeah, we're just spending, you know, Here. five six months, you know, every day in cultivation. So start early in the morning. Yep. Like praying to your plants. Yeah, it's like, yep. dude, it's such a such a like devastating thing when and dude, when a rain comes and you're not adequately posted or staked or trellised, it's like so devastating. You know, like, you know, a thousand pound or I mean a thousand dollar like. You know, arm just broke off. Oh, and premature. It's like, oh. Yeah. Um, so basically, appellation of origin, right, is appellation of origin. Okay. So, like, the origin of how the plant expressed itself, right? So you have tewa, which comes in. And tewa is love, right? That's what I say. It's like, you can't define love, you can't define tewa. It's like, right. you know, a layman's definition would be the epigenetic qualities of the plant coming out through the environmental Expression impacts. Expression of the person. You know, and the, yeah, 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 that's yeah awesome. the environmental impacts, yeah, of, yeah. you know. And, and so, therefore, you know, plant also expresses itself fully in what environment. Awesome. The truth around tewa and the truth around expression, right, is in appellation, okay? It's defined in appellation of origin. It has to be the boundary that protects our ability to grow in soil. Growing in, growing in a smart pot, growing in an engineered soil in the sun is great. Good job. Good, good, good job. You, you did a good job growing outdoors. You got all your smart pots, everything. It's like, you know, way to not be indoors, you know what I'm saying? You know, now, let's talk about how your plant expresses itself in the soil. And we're talking about, I mean, the, the numbers get thrown around are about esoteric. like 75, yeah, it gets totally esoteric because we're talking about the microbiome. Yeah, we're the talking about the full mycelial network, network yeah, of the, the entire soil. Communication with all the, the Communication with everything, the yeah. entire yeah. environment. They're, they're tapping into each other, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's internet service. It's like the IG for, for plants, you know? And, None, so, yeah, and, yeah. and so now we say, okay, great, good job. Okay, you know, the, 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 the outdoor farmer just became a tewa farmer, right? It just became an Appalachian farmer, you know? And that's where you're gonna to start to see the reserve quality. That's where you're gonna to start to see the hand touch. That's where you're gonna see all the things that you want to see, right? Coming from a high quality project product, coming from a regeneratively farmed product, coming out of that Appalachian system. The standards are gonna be set, like I said, about 25 engineered, 75 native. That 25 engineered is probably gonna, most likely gonna have to be engineered either on site or within the Appalachian. So it's sharing the same microbiome that it's inoculated with the same, you know, fungal spore and content that, that's, that's native to that region. 
So does this mean that people who grow in, for example, the areas of Humboldt where the, they always say the, clay, the, the soil is so clay-like that I need to use so much potting soil from whatever vendor that they probably won't be able to achieve appellation? Well, they're, they're not educated. They're not educated on the fact that... And just work to create yeah, that yeah, soil, living yeah. soil the, environment the, the, in your the, the, the mineral content, right? If you, live in hum, if you live in Humboldt and you have an area that's, uh, you know, that says, like, oh, my God, my clay soil, like, it's impenetrable. It retains all of the moisture. There's no way. There's no drainage. I, I have to use engineered soil. You know, I call BS because the idea is now with regenerative farming. I mean, it's not now with regenerative farming enter in back in regenerative farming practices where engineered soil engineered soil right isn't from a bag right it's human touch soil like it's like this you can engineer soil right like that's what i do i engineer soil every day i am a soil farmer it's my responsibility to my plant especially growing an annual that's not going to be able to grow year after year after year after year after year in the same hole that I have six months to grow that one plant or eight months to grow that one plant that I have to engineer the highest quality soil derived from my specific tewa right. it goes into that now it conditions the native soil right? right it conditions and now year after year after year after year after year my soil when you dig your hand in it is permeable right Right, I've put the humus. Might not start that way. It didn't yeah. start that way. So what I but say? All the microbes, all the yeah. living organisms from the wood chipped kind of tree native to your land, you know, that degrades over two years and becomes a super high humic source, humus source with all these protozoa and native fungus. And I mean, yeah, it's and it's constantly feeding organisms and like all of a sudden it's like you know creating this living entity. You know, it's like through and then you're feeding it. You know, and then. And yeah, over time, it, it, and it then is able to become, like, I mean, there's there's ways that, you know, through regenerative farming practices, you can regenerate inches of topsoil, you know, the most fertile, rich topsoil, you know, and it, you know, can reverse the effects of desertification, you know, when done right, you oh, know, it brings it, life it, back to the soil. It's, yeah. it's, you know, you're living in concert with the environment and the earth. I mean, that's it. And then it is, it is necessary that we use this time and place to, to push regenerative farming practices or to uh, hold space for regenerative yeah, farming yeah. practices to the rest of the world right so, so, so your point to the humble farmers who make that claim that's why i'm using the big smart pots well here's the deal the claim to the guys that are that are using the big smart pots is they're lazy right they're lazy in one way because they want to bit, get the biggest plant right right for the least amount of work right. and that's what i mean i don't mean that they didn't work to haul their soil in actually in a lot of ways they probably worked a lot harder right you know to get all that soil and to build all that infrastructure to make sure that that plant was able to grow hella fast in hella short amount of time right because at the end of the day we want 15 pounders you know like huge my wife thinks i'm an idiot because i like to grow one pounders and I like to grow a lot of them. I like to grow a lot of one pounders in native soil because I see the highest quality life. cannabis. Yeah. I see the highest quality of my life, my children's life, my, the, my, my patient's life when they're smoking my cannabis that's grown in my soil. You know, so it's like, I, yes, it would be great. It would be great if somebody wanted to come and just give me a million bucks. That would be awesome. I'm not saying don't ever give me money. I don't, I'm not in it for the money, but I'm saying, I'm not willing to sacrifice Come the earth, you know, the, to that capacity for money, right? Awesome. So, so to those humble farmers, you're saying you can do it, start now, start like building up your, take your clay soil and basically slowly. What I say to hum humble farmers, if you want to be recognized as Appalachian grown cannabis, you must grow in soil. Yeah. Because the relationship between soil and sun is where it's at. Local soil. Lo no. Native like soil. Like native soil. Right, right, like right. your soil, right? Yeah, soil. And sun, right? So when yeah, when I say soil, like I don't even add in engineered soil because right. like it's like whatever, like I you know like bulk, there like bulk, amendments say, to like, add into the, you know yeah. I mean that's but yeah, so it's like so it's like I mean I would hope that everyone who has a cannabis farm has a huge compost pile. 
right? Most of it aren't. Like, like, I mean, that just makes sense, right? You're participating Especially in that much agriculture. from your, yeah. you know, a wood, yeah. uh, some wood source, you know, native to your land. Yeah. You the family tree guys are out on the roads clearing, you know, PG and E stuff every day out in front yeah, of your I house. always grab that. Trust stuff. me, I know. Like, I got a dump site. Every one of my farms, man, I high five those guys when they stop me on the oh, side yeah. of the road. Because they, they all know how to get into my farm. They all know which gate to go into. They all know where to dump. All of my chippings, I get them to come by and chip up all of my stuff. That's and amazing. I build my piles. Boom. Dude, build that's so piles, awesome, ruin man. All my piles. That's like gold, you know? bro. Yeah, it's, it, it is like gold. And that's and that's the thing. And it's like I have and that's uh, the, the thing wood absent, mill down yeah. the road that I get all of my sawdust chips right. from. Chip all that in, you know, mix all of that in. I mean, I have... I mean, I have collard greens with leaves like that oh big God. on them, grown in like pig <laughs> shit and redwood duff, you know, like, n like no bottle of anything, you know, right. just just pig shit and redwood duff, and that's and they are raging, know, and they are raging, you know. And then I look at like engineered soil patches and things of that nature that I'm like, they're doing all right, you know, but they didn't homogeneously evolve with my soil, right? My soil has been active. You know, on that land, it's a participant in my system, right? It is, it is, you know, it's in synergy. There's no one dominant participant, right? It's all equal parts to make up the whole, right? So it's like, so that's 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 synergy, and that's what we're doing. We're building synergy, and the Appalachian system standards are going to be around synergistic agricultural models, right? System regenerative, like that's that. Those are going to be the important platforms. You know, going forward for standards in Appalachia, awesome. and 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 I'm and that yeah, that's 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 so humble farmers, you can do it. You know, <laughs> okay, maybe you're over good you enough. Yeah, man, just start, you're start the path. Enough, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah people, like you. people like you. Oh, should we get Al Franken to do that? That'd be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> good job, humble farmers. No, Mendo farmers too. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's all farmers. All farmers. All yeah, farmers. no, dude, biggest up to the farmers, man. That's yeah. where it's, it's where it all comes from. That's you know, it's the foundation of everything and. And you know, it's like I think yeah. As long as people focus on just you know, not 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 trying to focus on how big other people are doing and how big everybody's going, just focusing on doing what you're doing well and learning more and more by the day. From you know, every day is a school day, and like learn from the plant, learn from the earth. It's like if you just potting up in the smart pots with fucking pro mix and yep. three part GHing it, it's like you're almost in a huge way out of touch with this whole life cycle that the plant can empower you with and then make you you know the best farmer in the world you know but it's like teaming with microbes and understanding the symbiosis of like this you know the systems approach towards how we grow this plant and how the plant grows up you know so i mean you said it though big isn't always better i mean you're growing hella leaf you're growing hella stock you're growing hella you know like these large calls are